Okay, um, this guy here, the gentleman dropped it off, and we've got a few minor issues. One, the guy stripped it down. Two, it was cracked. Um, so we've re-glued that up, um, and then we've got some chips in it, and he sanded it down completely. So we're going to want to match the stock again back up to uh, up to the forearm, and he wants some of these bigger ones taken out of here in the forearm also. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use uh, our red oak. Because this is a darker wood, red oak is always the best that we can find for this because we can match it up pretty good when we sand it down. So you just want to run a bead of that up against the uh, up against the crack, and then let that dry for about an hour before we before we go back and sand that down, and we'll be able to grain that back in. Now this piece here, we're actually going to rebuild with the fill sticks. Now some of the larger parts that we see here. We're just going to fill those in too, because we'll be able to grain those in. Makes it a little easier when we're we have to fill less with the fill sticks. As long as we're doing some putty on it, we might as well get those bigger ones out of the way right away. larger ones the rest of them will come back and we'll we'll fill those in with the fill sticks after it dries so there we go and we'll set this one aside and we'll uh, we'll move on to that in about an hour okay this is the one we puttied up in a little bit ago now that's all dry now we're going to sand that down with a 220 sandpaper Up enough sandpaper so you can put it in between two fingers when you're sanding like that. Now, you just want to light sand in circles. Now, you're going to be able to feel when you've gotten rid of the high spots. Always go in a circular motion. That'll make sure that. You're not digging back into your into your repair. Now when you get up here, of course, you're not going to be able to do that, so you want to go just straight. Now your sandpaper will fill up pretty quickly. It's always a good idea to take like a toothbrush. Um, we do have available wire brushes that will help you clean out that sandpaper. Makes it last longer. Sandpaper is a, can get quite expensive when you're going through a lot of it. Now here you'll see it looks like it's smooth, but where that thick patch is, that's actually an overfill on there. There we go, we've gotten rid of that. And then we go on this side, do the same. Now, if you're not comfortable, I've been doing this so long that I don't, I don't touch the bluing, the blued parts of the metal. But if you're, uh, if you're just beginning, I would recommend that you put a little tape over your bluing so that you don't scratch it. Because all you do is scratch it once, and then you're going to re-blue it. But that's what the new blue is for if you do have an accident. Now when he sanded this, he only rough sanded this. So this wood is, is actually quite rough. So we're going to take our 220 now and we're just going to go over the whole thing real lightly. Don't press hard on your sandpaper. It won't last as long and it's not going to do you any good to press real hard. Oh, 
really get it pretty much smoothed out here. That's nice and smooth. Now remember we were talking about this chip right here on the edge. So what we're going to do, we lay in our box, we're going to grab our filler sticks and our knife. This one we'll just use the burgundy for. And we're going to lay that right on top of that. Now we're going to Fill that from the top to the bottom, it'll flow in. So that'll dry in just a couple of seconds. Wet your finger. Just mold it onto it while it's still a little pliable. Take your knife again, and now work in the direction of how it's shaped. Again, these rounded edges will take a little practice. You'll wind up ripping it out more than you'll be repairing it. But eventually you'll get it right, but that's the only way you learn. Now you want to take the chisel, take out any of the overfill that you have. or take your color restorer and I'll spray your color restorer on there. Spray on the entire stock that's going to bring the color back out of the wood. Now you'll see where we where we filled it with the putty it's going to still be light. That's where we're going to use our powdered stains again to hide any of those blemishes. round edge on there now. It's a little darker, but we'll fix that. Now the key with a gun like this, this is an older gun, you don't want it looking brand new. You want it to look like it's been maintained, not like it's been redone. When you're done re repairing something, you don't want it to look like it's been refinished. You want, you want people to not notice what you've done. That's the sign of a good repair. Okay, now we're going to take our brush, dip it into our top coat. Now on this, this has more of a mahogany color to it, so we're going to use a little of the red mahogany and black. That's going to get us a darker mahogany. And now we're just gonna we're gonna go with the greening the way the repair is. Now when you're going with the green, don't paint with the repair. Go straight down. That's how your green pattern is on this gun. So you're gonna you're gonna cross over your repair so that you don't look like you've got a blob sitting there. Again, with practice, it will come to you. Reload our brush. Again, with the grain. Always look to see which direction your grain pattern is going, and then go with, when you're, when you're working with the putty, go in that direction. Wherever your grain pattern is heading, that's where you want to go with your brush. Takes just a couple of seconds to look at it, and you'll determine where it's going. 
And this one you'll see the grain pattern is coming this way, so that's the direction that we're going to go. We're going to go in that same direction. Now you'll notice we're not dotting here. What we're doing here is we're actually, we're actually striping it here. We're actually replacing the graining. Now this is a more of a round spot. So this one we're going to dot and then we're going to go out from there. And we're going to do the same thing up here. With the green. Stay away from your metal. Dot when you get to the, to the edge of the metal. to the forearm, we'll sand that area off, clean off our brush, and we'll work our way up to the forearm. Okay, so we've sanded the stock down, now we're just going to finish up on the forearm. We're just going to sand out the putty that we put on there, just light sand it. Now we've got a couple of spots. We've got a nick here, and we've got a little nick right there. Now that's not going to take putty, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use again, we're going to use our, our burgundy transparent. transparent. We're just going to lay that on there in those spots. I'll let that set up for a couple of seconds. Yes. We've got one spot right here. Now we're going to roll this over. Now we're going to stay on both, both sides so our knife stays flat and we come up with a nice flat finish on there. Nice flat finish built. Now we're going to roll along the edge. it off. There's our box for this. Now we'll just sit the glass and sand it. For the 400. Now when you're sanding older wood like this, what you're actually doing is polishing it because as the years go by, what happens with this wood is the grain starts to lift. So this cuts that back down a little bit. Now what we've got here is we've got, we've got variations of color between the stock and the forearm. So we're going to fill in where we did our putty with color. And now we're going to match the two. We're going to match the stock and the forearm together. Now to do that, we're going to take our staining cloth, small part. Now you can see that our our forearm is actually darker than our stock. So we're going to darken up the stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little black, a little bit of the mahogany, a little more black. And now we're going, to, we're going to go with the grain all the way up. And you can see how that color is changing on there. We're not hiding the grain, we're, we're leaving it transparent, but we're just darkening it up so that it's starting to match the forearm. And you 
see how our color is changing. But we're not, we're not painting it, we're just tinting it is all we're doing. Now we need to go a little bit darker. You can see the variation there. So we need to go with just a little more black on there. Now you don't want when you're seeing when you're seeing on your paper on your card, when you see that you can still see through to the card a little bit, that means that you've got just the right amount of tint. There we go. If it looks too opaque on the paper, it's going to be like paint on the stock. There we've got a good match. Now we're just going to tint this just a little bit. That's going to bring out some of that green pattern. Got it in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back with our cheesecloth. And we're going to put our top coat on. Now this is going to be our final coat. And we'll probably add a couple of coats on there so that we have a nice luster finish on it. But this will give you an idea of what it's going to look like when we're finished. So again, I'm going to put a little more top coat in there. And I'm going to roll it in a circle. That gets all of the air bubbles out of it. All the way up and all the way down. Keep it a steady motion so that you don't get any stop marks. On the top coat you don't have to worry too much about stop marks because those will polish out. But it just makes your life a little bit easier. Now if you do get a little bit of the top coat on the metal, it will still roll off very easily. Again, as you're starting out, either consider taking the gun apart and using and doing just the wood or taping up sections. But um, there you have it, and now that's ready to just be buffed. Now, after a few coats, we'll uh, finish that up with uh, Rustatech, and uh, everything is going to be good to go.